Hi, welcome back. We have multiple videos in this YouTube channel and there are multiple playlists. And the big difference is between the playlist that Ozone Development is for developers. And I was thinking a lot about this topic, if it's for the developers or the users or administra administrators, but I think it can be useful not only for the developers, because the class pass is one which usually changed when Ozone should be it, Ozone is used together with other projects like HBase, Kafka, Flink, and there are very important differences between Ozone and HDFS regarding to the class pass handling. So this is a Hadoop install. So I can just start the good old Hadoop class pass command, which prints out all of the Hadoop related class pass, including yarn, HDFS, everything. Everything is included. For example, if I check this share Hadoop HDFS, which is added to the class pass, I will see that I have all of the jar files, even the test jar files and everything. And it's a very common pattern that this Hadoop class pass or the content of the Hadoop class pass or the output of the Hadoop class pass is just added to a class pass of an other GVM application. Ozone is different. Ozone works in a different way. So if you would like to use Ozone from any other application, you need only one jar file. So this is an Ozone install. If you download the Ozone distribution, you will see exactly the same thing. And we have a lot of jar files in this share Ozone lib. Actually, all of the jar files are here. And if you would like to use Ozone compatible file system from Flink, Spark, Hive, HBase, NiFi, the only thing what you need is the Ozone file system jar file. One thing which is important, there are multiple Ozone file systems, so use this one. So these are just because the build system, so everything is shaded and on top of this shaded version we have two versions, one for the Hadoop 3 and one for the Hadoop 2. And it depends from your environment, you need the Hadoop 2 variation or the Hadoop 3 variation. That's one thing. So that's the only thing what uh, you should put your class pass to use Ozone. But the, there is another thing that in Ozone we also have an Ozone class pass command, but it shows the difference. So there is no class pass output, right? There is no one Ozone class pass. If you are interested about the class pass of different components, then I can have a question. Okay, which component? If you are interested, for example, the Ozone Manager class pass, that can be printed out. Okay, it's not very easy to understood, but if I replace everything with new line, oh, you can see that these are the jar files which required to start also manager. So the main reason for this one is that we have no one class pass first, because one jar is enough to use Ozon. The second one is that the main class pass question is nothing more just a mapping. On the development side, we have a transitive dependency graph, and on the user side, we have a, a list of jar files, which should be defined for the GVM process. And it can be done in multiple ways, but just to make sure that we use exactly the same class pass, the very limited class pass for each of the processes, we just generate this list based on the based on the development settings. So if you go to the share ozone class pass actually, you can see the descriptors. So th these are automatically generated and all of the required jar files just uh, listed in these text files. So this is required for the Hadoop Ozone tool. So if you'd like to execute any kind of CLI, this can be replaced with the share Ozone lib and all of the jar files should be added to the class pass. That's all. So actually these class pass descriptors are included in the Hadoop Ozone jar artifacts as well. But during the build they are, so if you check this uh, jar file, 
it includes this uh, text file but during the build they are removed out just to make it easier to access so it's very in important because after this, this one you should never use something like export class pass equals share ozone share ozone lib this one because there could be conflicting jar files right it's not all of the jar files which are required for for ozone but there could be multiple use cases s3 compatible interface or kubernetes container storage interface uh, daemon and each of these services required different class pass definition which uh, can be different so share ozone lib is the collection of all of the possible jars which might be useful to start any of the services but the important part is that we have a, a very limited and uh, well-defined set of jar files which are required for each of the components and uh, you can check this list with this ozone class pass command two other things first of all if you would like to add something to the class pass of the ozone daemon you can use the good old Hadoop class pass usually you don't need it but if you need you can just use the Hadoop class pass one other thing what you can also do that if you create a directory with exactly the same name as the class pass definition for example Hadoop tools then it will be added automatically to the class pass so if I check the class pass of the Hadoop tools, which means that Ozone, Hadoop Ozone tools, which means all of the CLI, then you will see that this directory is added based on this name convention. So if you would like to try it out something just for one daemon, then this is the right place to put a jar file and it will be picked by the, by the Ozone. Okay, let's go back to here. And here you can see the overview that it's very important that we have project level or service level class pass. There is no one big class, class pass. You can put additional things to with this directory or Hadoop class pass. But if you would like to Ozone as an Ozone Hadoop compatible file system, you don't need to do anything. Just use Hadoop Ozone file system Hadoop 3 jar except if you have an older Hadoop cluster. In that case, you need the uh, same, but with uh, ending with Hadoop 2 jar. And that was everything about the uh, class pass quickly. Thank you very much for your attention.